Welcome to Dozochem. This video covers general gas law, effective changes in volume, temperature, or pressure. For the next couple of slides, if you see an I that stands for initial and F stands for final. So if you have a sample of gas and you measure the pressure, volume, moles, and temperature at some point in time, let's call it the initial point in time, and you find that ratio PV over NT, that's going to equal R. Uh, then, if something happens to each of those properties and they change, uh, so even though all four might be different than they were initially, uh, all four final values might be different, if you find that ratio again, PV over NT using the final values, uh, it'll still equal R. Therefore, uh, we can come up with an equation called the general gas law that's shown here. And that you would use to calculate uh, a new property of a gas if the other ones change. Um, now, a couple of things to keep in mind. Pressure and volume can actually be in any unit you want when you do this, but temperature must be in Kelvin. So make sure you keep that in mind as you do the next couple of problems. All right, so let's start with a gas sample originally at 175 degrees C, and it has a pressure change from 788 millimeters of mercury to 394 millimeters of mercury. And the volumes change from 222 milliliters to 333 milliliters, and they want to know what will be the new temperature of the gas in degrees C. Um, now, you notice they didn't mention moles at all, so you can assume the moles are constant. Um, if that's the case, then the equation I had on the previous slide, you can just delete n from that because it's the same on both sides of the equation, and it cancels out. Um, so we can use this simplified version of the general gas law for when the moles are constant. Um, so we want to take this equation and solve for final temperature, Tf. Um, so it shows you what that equals here. Ti times Pf times Vf over Pi times Vi. Um, so for initial temperature, they said 175 degrees C, but we need to change that to Kelvins by adding 273. Um, but for the pressures and the volumes, we're going to actually leave those in the units that they we're given it in the problem. So the final pressure comes next, um, and the final volume, 333 mill milliliters. Um, and then you divide by initial pressure was 788, and initial volume was 222. So if you do the math here, the milliliters will cancel, the millimeters of mercury will cancel, and you will end up with an answer in Kelvins, 336K. But they asked in the problem, for your final answer to be given in degrees C, so we need to subtract 273 to get our final answer in degrees Celsius. All right, next example, you've got a gas with a pressure of 774 millimeters of mercury and a volume starts out at 33 milliliters and it's changed to 99 milliliters. What is the new pressure of the gas? Um, so this time you notice the moles and the temperature were not mentioned, so you assume those are constant. So the bottom of the denominator in the general gas law drops out because those uh, variables cancel on both sides of the equation. So we get a simplified version um, just relating pressure and volume, which is known as Boyle's Law. Um, if we solve that for Pf, that's going to equal Pi Vi over Vf, and then you just start plugging in numbers from the question. So initial pressure, 774 millimeters of mercury, initial volume 33, and final volume 99. So when you do the math, the milliliters cancel, and you will end up with your final pressure in millimeters of mercury. And let's do one final example. In this one, we've got a gas with a volume of 444 milli milliliters. Uh, its temperature changed from 25 degrees to 75 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume of the gas? Uh, so in this case, moles and pressure are constant. So if we drop those out of the general gas law, we get Vi over Ti is Vf over Tf, um, which is also known as Charles' Law. Um, so let's take that equation that I just circled and solve for Vf. It equals Vi times Tf over Ti. So let's go up to the original question and start plugging in numbers. Uh, the initial volume, 444 milli milliliters. The final temperature, we need to change to Kelvin, so 75 plus 273. 
and our initial temperature, 25 Celsius, we're going to add 273 to bring it to Kelvin. Remember, you must use Kelvins for the temperature, but the volume can stay in its original unit. So when you do that, the Kelvins cancel, and you get your final answer will be in whatever unit your volume was when you plugged it in. So in this case, it ends up in milliliters. So uh, that's the general gas law, and that's it for this video. Good luck.